and welcome back to my channel. So before I begin, I'd just like to say sorry if it's a little bit echoey today. I don't know what happened to the thing that I normally have covering the door in this room, so it might be a little echoey. Sorry about that. But today I want to talk about Disney cruises. I have been on plenty of Disney cruises, however I haven't been on one for a very long time. So I'm going to do the best I can to kind of give you my experience from like a child's perspective on what the Disney cruise is about, how I liked it, and all that good stuff. And then I'll tell you guys some things just to consider before you take a Disney cruise. So let's talk Disney. experience with Disney. I have been on two or three Disney cruises. I can't remember. It's been such a long time. And I know we went on the Dream and I think the Fantasy. I'm pretty sure those were the two we went on. So absolutely loved the ships and being a kid it was definitely really magical. Especially loving Disney as much as I do. I loved it. They have tons of things for kids to do. So many things. So I guess that's kind of where I want to start off with. It's just some of the things that you can do with your kids. So there is a kids club. At first I was kind of not sure whether I wanted, wanted to do it or not. I'm pretty sure the first cruise I went on I did not do the kids club because I was just kind of shy and I really didn't want to. But the second time I did and I am so glad I did. My parents had to drag me out of there at like midnight because I did not want to leave. We made flubber, we played games, they took us to do different crafts, it, it's just so much fun. So if you do have a child and you are doing a Disney cruise, really try to push them to at least try it because I'm sure they'll love it. So a few of the things that I wanted to talk about that we did that I actually have some stuff for. We made pillowcases one night. Now unfortunately this is not, I don't know what happened to my Disney one, so this is not Disney, but to give you kind of an idea, this was Royal Caribbean, but they give you these like pillowcases and then you like color them. And it's so cute and that, that's just the kind of stuff that you do. So once again, that's not from Disney, but that's the kind of stuff you do. This wasn't specifically related to um, kids, but they have a pirate night. I don't know if they still do, I'm sure they do, where they had like just tons of like pirate themed things. Dinner was like pirate themed, that kind of stuff. So we got these like bandanas and they just, they make fun things like that that aren't even just for kids. And then my favorite thing was at the end of the kids club, we had a graduation. And we got little Mickey mortarboard, mortarboard hats, and um, they're just so cute. And it says Disney Sea University, Disney Cruise Line. And I'm not sure if they still do this, because once again, last time I went was a very long time ago, so I'm not quite sure if that's still a thing, but that was, that was so much fun. They got us all up on stage, and we wore these, we got shirts which I couldn't find. I have so many things from the Disney Cruises that I just can't find. But um, if I find it, I'll definitely show you guys later. So that's super exciting. So as a kid, like I said, obviously it's Disney, so it's gonna be kind of all around kids, but it is not just for kids. So that brings me into my next point, which is how to know if you should do the Disney Cruise. Tons of people, are very conflicted about whether the Disney Cruise is right for them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the Disney Cruise is not for everybody. Obviously, if you have kids, that's kind of an important thing. If you do have kids, then yes, it probably is a good thing to go to, on a Disney Cruise at least once. But even if you don't have kids, you can still go on a Disney Cruise. There is plenty of things to do on a Disney Cruise for adults as well as kids. So, with that being said, one of the reasons to go on a Disney cruise is obviously your love for Disney. If you love Disney, then yes, this is for you. If you don't love Disney, do not go on a Disney cruise because as I stated before, between the differences between Disneyland and Disney World, 
with Disneyland, you can easily walk across the street and you're off Disney property. With Disney World, you can still get out of Disney if you're done with Disney and do other things, but you are definitely more surrounded by Disney. Disney Cruise, you have to jump overboard to get away from Disney. You will be on a cruise ship that is Disney all the time, so if that bothers you, then maybe this isn't the right thing for you because you are submerged in Disney. It's part of the experience, so definitely one thing to think of. Like I said, if you are an adult though, there are plenty of things to do. They do have bars, there are pools just for adults, you have the wonderful dining experiences, and just all that. So that's nice to know. So with going around thinking about all the things that you can do on a Disney cruise ship, like I said, they have the pools, they have definitely tons of places to eat. What I like about the dining is, yes, you keep your waiters, but you're not situated in the same dining room each night. You actually go around to different dining locations. My favorite was Animator's Palette just because it's so bright and vibrant and I absolutely love it. So that was really awesome. You have the kids clubs, you have teen clubs, just a lot to do. There are theater productions. So definitely a lot to do. And with the newer ships, there's even more stuff to do. Like the new one has the water slide that they incorporated and fireworks on the ship. And I think part of the reason Disney is stepping up is because Royal Caribbean Sorry, Disney, but my parents and I are very, <laughs> very much Royal Caribbean people when it comes to cruises just because their ships are very, very large and there is a lot more to do on those. So that's another thing to think about. If you want, if you're the type of person that needs a lot to do, Disney does have a lot, but there are cruise ships like Royal Caribbean that has rock climbing walls, ice skating rinks, like a lot more. So you might want to take that into consideration too. But at the same time, Disney has things that other cruises might not, so you kind of just have to weigh those. So once you decide if Disney cruises are right for you and you guys know you want to take one, the next step is to obviously figure out around what time you're probably going to want to go because are you going to want to go, depending on wh where you're going, are you going to want to go in the winter, fall, spring, summer? I know personally for me when I was younger and in an elementary school and I could be taken out of school without it being a problem, we would constantly go in October just because rates are lower and you know it's cold where I am so why not go to the Caribbean and be warm during that time. So it kind of just depends. Which brings me to my next thing which is where you want to go. Now it's important to decide where you want to go before you pick a cruise ship just because certain cruise ships are in certain places. So the newest cruise ship, the Dream, is currently in Europe. I'm pretty sure it's in Europe. So if you didn't want to go to Europe, you obviously couldn't get on the new ship so you might want to wait until it comes here. So deciding what ship you want to go on and where you want to go is important and you might put one before the other. So if it's my priority to go to Europe and I don't care what ship is there, then obviously you would choose whatever ship is available at the time. But if you personally want to go on the Dream and it's currently in Europe but you don't want to go to Europe, you can wait until it moves back because it eventually will come back. So it really just depends but definitely trying to figure out where you want to go and understanding that where you want to go, for example, Europe, you might have to, well, you will have to buy plane tickets to fly to Europe and back because you will not be taking a cruise into Europe. So that kind of thing is important to know where your cruise ship is taking out of and where it's going to. Now, most of the Disney cruises do take out of Fort Lauderdale, I believe, and they would come back to Fort Lauderdale. So you kind of got to think about airfare, are you going to drive, how exactly you're getting to the port, because that's another important thing to think about. Another important thing to think about is that the different cruise ships are for different durations. So for example, the smaller cruise ships tend to be your three and four night cruises, whereas the bigger ones and the newer ones tend to be the seven and eight night cruise ships. So you kind of also got to decide how long you want to take your cruise. Um, obviously that's going to change the price a lot, so if you kind of just want to do the cruise for the experience and aren't really worried about too much about the ports, then that might be a thing to do. Another really cool thing while we're talking about ports that has to deal with the Disney cruise is that Disney has its own private island, Castaway Key, 
and this island is beautiful so just for that reason it's probably a really good reason to take a Disney cruise because there's no other time you will get to that island and it is truly a beautiful very well-kept island they actually have crew members who stay on the island for periods of time just so it can be like maintained and they can be ready for the next guest that comes that's pretty cool so once you've picked out your ship you need to decide what kind of room you want now this is from personal preference but i'm just gonna go ahead and say do not book an inside stateroom unless you truly have to for financial reasons or what have you from personal experience i have been the inside stateroom not with disney but on norwegian cruise line on it was a hawaiian based cruise and oh gosh it just it messes with you, especially if this is your first cruise, I do not recommend it. Not being able to see the water when you're moving can increase your seasick levels and just it messes with you. It's not fun at all, plus you are in very, very tight spaces. So personally, I would never do that again. I just, I can't handle it. I don't like it. I'm not one to get seasick, but I was getting seasick on that one. So I would not recommend that. So your other options are also a porthole window or a balcony. Now with Disney on the inside state rooms, I know on their most recent one, The Dream, they did this. I'm not sure if they're renovating the others to do the same, but they have virtual porthole windows. So I'm not sure about that. That probably would help stabilize your body. So that might work for an inside state room. I'm not quite sure exactly how different people would react to that, but definitely just having a porthole and being able to see the water helps. So if you don't want to get a balcony, you can get that. There are also lofts, suites, all of that depends on the size of your family and how much you want to spend and just what you prefer. So that's definitely another thing to think about. So while on the topic of cruises, there's one last thing I want to mention and it has absolutely nothing to do with Disney Cruise, but it has to do with cruises in general and getting seasick, so I thought I would mention it. My family and I went on a cruise to Bermuda on Norwegian Cruise Line and we had a balcony room, so no problem there. Never have I ever gotten seasick except for on this cruise. We were stuck in a tropical storm coming back from Bermuda and I was in bed for about probably a good 30 hours because the ship was rocking so much I couldn't stand up. At one point my parents went to go get like food or drinks or something and they were walking down the hallway like this and all of a sudden they were walking up the hallway and then they were walking down the hallway because that's how much the ship was rocking and I have never been so terrified in my life. However, they are making better things to stabilize these cruise ships now and the likelihood of that happening isn't that great that you will get caught in a tropical storm, but I mean it could happen so just know about it. But definitely not to scare you out of doing a cruise because cruises are great. We still take cruises. I just took a cruise on from the Caribbean in July. Cruises are great and Disney cruises are great. So if you guys are even thinking about Disney cruising, Disney cruises, I highly recommend you do one because they are a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you guys next week. Bye.